Hey guys, how's it going? It's X666X Iron Maiden. Today we are back with Great Northern War from Extra Credits. This is episode 5, Rise and Fall. Alright guys, so this is the last episode of the Great Northern War. There is another episode uh, that they do for a lot of them, uh, which is just titled Lies, um, that we'll also be doing after this. But um, at the moment, uh, this is the, I think, the final one of the actual story. Um, I don't believe Lies continues the story, because as I said, like a few of the different ones uh, for the other countries as well also ends with that. So. Uh, Last time what we left with basically Charles just getting everything go wrong. He's getting chased back by Russians. Let's see where this is going to end. Ragged and battered, the tattered remnants of the Swedish army fly south. Charles hopes to find succor within the Ottoman Empire, but Peter is hard on his heels. Nearly starving, suffering from the heat, the remaining Swedes raced south until they arrived at the very border of the Black Sea. But as the local prince haggled over prices for boats to ferry them into the Ottoman Empire, Peter overtook the Swedish rearguard. 800 were lost, only 500 remained. But those 500 made their way That's into nice. the Sultanate. There they were treated regally, given food and drink, even allowed to set up an almost autonomous colony which the Ottomans helped them to build. But Peter did not relent. As his forces approached the border of the empire, he demanded that Charles be handed over. The Sultan, who was no friend of the Russians, refused, so Peter decided to force the issue. He would bring war to the Ottoman Empire itself. His army, augmented by forces from Moldovia, plunged towards Pluth River, where Jeez. they were rapidly cut off by the giant home army of the Ottoman Empire. For a moment, it looked as though Peter and his entire force might fall into the Sultan's hands. But where Peter and his subordinates had clearly lost the war, you might argue that they won the peace. Deftly using diplomacy to extricate his army, Peter was allowed to leave the Ottoman territory with his army intact for little more than an agreement to give Charles safe passage back to Sweden, and a handful of very minor territorial concessions. But this was not good enough for Charles. He pushed the Sultan to make war on the Russians. The Sultan had no interest in such a costly project. He was basically like, we won you the right to go home, man, just go home. Charles then decided to be the ultimate bad house guest and declared, all right, I live here now. To which the Sultan replied, dude, come on. And Charles <laughs> responded, I will cut you. At which point the Sultan, in his infinite patience, said, look, I will give you 10,000 pounds if you will just leave. Charles took this payment and then, like any bad house guest, said, all right, I will leave if you give me 8,000 more. At which point the Sultan was like, okay, time to call the sheriff, before remembering, oh wait, I'm the sheriff, and then promptly surrounded Charles' small force and threw him into jail. After cooling his heels for a while, <laughs> Charles was, at last, allowed to return to Sweden. And it was at this point that <coughs> Augustus the Strong, deposed King of Poland, returned <coughs> to the spotlight. After having a good long think, he had finally decided, you know, I have heard good things about winning. New plan? Let's try that. He was super excited about this plan, and, I mean, why wouldn't he be? It's a pretty solid plan. Anyway, he proceeded to basically roll Swedish forces back to the very borders of Polish-Lithuanian territory. Then, after a heroic last effort me, from the Swedish troops, he bottled them up in a fortress in Holstein Gotorp, and when no aid came to save them, he forced them to surrender. The last truly major army of the Swedes had vanished. So the dominoes began to fall. Russia, yep. Norway, and Poland-Lithuania were already at war with Sweden. Those who had fallen out of the alliance due to previous defeats were now back in. Then the King of England got into the mix, under his other title as Elector of Hanover. And then so did Prussia. So at this point, Sweden is basically at war with all of Northern Europe. Their resources are tapped, and the great armies that had swept them to empire were now shattered or imprisoned. But Charles yeah. was not deterred. Never one to surrender, never one to make peace. He raised what forces he could and kicked off a campaign in Norway. And this began pretty well. 
he cut his way through the thin Danish-Norwegian defenses, threatening to overwhelm the knife at the back of Sweden. But then disaster struck in the Baltic. Norwegian naval forces ambushed the Swedish fleet, nearly wiping it out. This left Charles unable to resupply, and he was forced to retreat once again. Meanwhile, in Finland, which was part of Sweden at the time, the Russians had invaded. Initially, the going was slow. The Russians were impeded by poor roads and bad weather. But Peter, with his love of ships, settled on a new course of action. One where the Russian offensive would be centered on the coastline, where men and material could rapidly be transferred by sea. The Swedish commander in Finland was continually on the retreat, having neither the men nor the supplies necessary to contest the Russians. For this, he was recalled and replaced with a man who was much more likely to agree to the native Finns demand for a fight. And fight they did, twice. But long gone were the days when Swedish forces could beat the Russians 8 to 1, or even 2 to 1. The Swedish army in Finland was almost entirely made up of Finnish troops, not the Swedish corps who had done so much at the outset of the war, only to be eventually wiped out in Makes Russia. Sense. This Finnish army was beaten back both times. And this destroyed. all occurred Ugh. just before the Swedish navy got stomped outside of Norway. And I'm sorry for how confusing these timelines are, but at this point everything is kind of happening at once. The Swedish That's fleet was sent to help out the Finnish forces, to take some of the pressure off. But Peter, great lover of sailing ships that he was, ironically used a fleet of galleys to blaze past them on a day in which the sea was calm. Soon, the Finnish front was untenable, and That's what nuts. troops were left were recalled to defend Sweden itself. But Charles was not yet done. He planned a return to Norway. He knew there was exactly one hope. He needed to capture the fortress of Fredrikston, the very same place he had just lost his fleet failing to capture. He raised another 22,000 men for his last attempt to turn things around. Their campaign in Norway was hard going, always in want of rations, having to swim across rivers or climb whole mountains to oh, achieve man. the positioning that Charles wanted. But despite this suffering, Swedish discipline won out. And through this privation, the army never truly wavered, because they had always the example of their king, who always took the roughest task for himself. By November 1718, Which is pretty they cool. made it to the fortress. Charles himself led an assault on the outer works and overwhelmed them with his loyal grenadiers. Things were progressing nicely, but now the fortress had to be breached. On the 30th of November, Charles went to inspect the trench works. Laughing and joking with the men, he encouraged them in their work. Then, as night fell, the defenders put burning wreaths on the fortress wall to illuminate the surrounding ground. The king suspected that they might sortie out and try to smash the progress that had been made on the siege works before returning to the safety of their fort, so he climbed to the lip of the trench to get a better look. A nearby French officer, who had just joined the Swedes, called out to him, That is no fit place for your majesty. Musket balls and cannonballs have as little respect for the king as for the common soldier. The king simply responded, Don't be afraid. And one of the Swedish officers told the Frenchman, let him be. The more you warn him, the more he'll expose himself. <laughs> the moon now washed the whole battlefield in a pale light. Soldiers worked, officers directed, and then there was a soft, wet sound, no louder than that of a rock gently dropped into a pool. The king was dead. A shot had passed through his left temple and out the right. He died where he lay, right at the top of the trench works. The succession passed to his sister, but the spirit of the army was gone. A retreat was made, and preparations to defend the homeland began. But defense was only a dream. From 1719 to yeah. 1721, Sweden suffered brutal raids and incursions from the Russians, until, at last, they were forced to make peace. Sweden had to cede almost all of its territory except for the home country itself and Finland, which, after an occupation known as the Great Wrath, the Russians agreed to leave be. The grand dream of Charles was smashed, and with it, the Swedish Empire. Sweden would never rise again to such a position of prominence on the world stage. But as Charles's dream lay in ruins, Peter's became a reality. Russia pushed westward, gaining ports along the Baltic coast. More importantly, they proved that they were a power on the rise, that no longer could calculations about European politics be made without factoring the Russians in. Thus, the Great Northern War ends, and the wheel turns as one empire falls and another rises. Yep. Alright, so, that is the end.
And that ending we already knew was coming for anybody who's been watching since I was doing Sabaton. You guys all knew that was coming, and I, you guys knew I knew that was coming, um, the way this ended. I'm curious what the, the next video is going to have with the lies. I mean, I'm going to guess that it's just extra information that was told throughout history uh, that was not true, maybe? I don't know. But um, I thought this series for the Great Northern War was really well done, though. I really enjoyed it. I found that it gave just enough information, the animations were nice, uh, you know, it's it's just long enough uh, to, if it's put all five together, it's 50 minutes of information almost, so it's really nice to get all that information packed in, you know, about a country that I don't really know any of their history about. I, I, I learned a bunch of history on, uh, on Sweden uh, recently, and that's cool. And we'll be covering other countries as well with uh, the same principle as this. I think our next one is, I think I've already added it to my list. Uh, we have one on World War One that we're going to be covering. That's also the same uh, same channel. We'll be doing it. That'll be the extra credits. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that one too, and hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to see more from me. I'm also on Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. And as always, you guys have a good one. I'll catch you later.